Now that hit impulse from the top drives you absolutely nuts. Cause you to be really inconsistent. And I'm gonna talk about a couple things here. First, I'm gonna talk about why this tape on my index finger and my thumb are really gonna help you to get rid of that hit impulse. And then I'm gonna give you a great drill to get rid of that impulse, add tons of lag, and then release through the shot, just like the pros are doing. Let's go and get started. All right, so first let's go over the tape. Now, what I've done here is I've taped up the knuckle of my index finger, so it makes it really tough. And I, I just had some masking tape in my bag uh, or sitting in, some, in my camera gear. Uh, you don't have to have any kind of special tape. Just get on there tight enough to where you try to bend your finger. It makes it really tough to do that. Also put it around the knuckle of your thumb so you can't really grab anything with your finger and your thumb of your right hand for right-handed players, your back hand. Now, the reason is when I hit from the top or I have that impulse, I'm really taking this right hand, I'm grabbing the club, I'm squeezing a hold of it, and I'm kind of throwing it from the top. You're gonna get a lot of that energy from those two fingers. So once you wrap up those two knuckles, it makes it very difficult to hit from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sit on the range, take a middle iron. I have a six iron here, and I'm just gonna hit some nice, easy shots. I'm just gonna hit them down kind of those two markers there, and I'm gonna get used to not using those two fingers in the swing. So nice and easy, nice straight shot like that. I'm going half swing, half speed. So nothing fancy there. Five or 10 balls, and you start to get used to not overpowering with these two fingers. But there's more to it. You know, if you could just simply tape up those two fingers, we need to use those two fingers at some point in the swing. The idea is we don't use them up here, and we go ahead and use them down here to release the club. That's where this drill is gonna come in really handy. You see, when a player is hitting from the top, what's happening is they're actually maxing out their lag too early. So whenever you hit the sharpest angle of lag and you get the sharpest angle here between your arms and the club, immediately, as soon as that angle hits its sharpest point, it wants to release. That's from something called the stretch shortening cycle. Basically, it just says, if you stretch a muscle out, as soon as it's fully stretched, it wants to fire. The natural gut reaction that you're gonna have is to fire those muscles. So the mistake that a lot of people make is in the backswing, they try to set those wrists really early. When they get to the top of the swing, you already have your hands fully set up here and they're wanting to throw. They're just dying to cast this club out and throw from the top. So we're gonna do a drill that's gonna do the actual opposite of that. In this drill, I want you to take a little half backswing and you're gonna stop when your hands are about waist high. I want very little to no wrist set at all here. I'm actually gonna have the club just kind of as an extension of my arms. Then I'm gonna start my downswing by getting a weight shift to the left, getting my momentum moving to the left. And that's when I wanna get, get the lag. So I'm actually getting rid of taking the lag up here at the top and I'm getting the lag in the downswing. So it's kind of halfway in my downswing when I'm actually setting my wrist fully. Then we're gonna go ahead and release it. And that gets you setting the wrist much, much later. It's a very big exaggeration drill. And man, it's gonna get rid of that hit impulse. This is like a reverse hit impulse drill. So here, I'm gonna go ahead, hands wide. I'm gonna set my wrist in the downswing and then I'm gonna swing on through. The last key is to make sure that you finish your swing. I don't wanna stop my swing and hit at it with my arms. Again, I wanna use the momentum of my body to move this on through. So here, a little half swing. And I know what you're thinking there. Clay, that was longer than a half swing. It's almost impossible to get yourself to stop this drill short enough. So really make sure that you feel like you're only taking the club back to here. Naturally, when you do that, it's gonna end up going back to here somewhere. I also realized that that club's gonna set a little bit more. It probably looked like I had a little more wrist hinge than when I set in my drill, but that's the feeling. It's not exactly what's happening there. I wanna have the feeling that in my backswing, there's no wrist set at all, and then I'm waiting till the downswing to set those wrists and swing on through to a full finish. So let's go ahead and hit one more here. Again, little to no wrist set at all in the backswing, letting those wrists set in the finish. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and swing on around and I have tons of lag there. Those last two shots came out really low, really penetrating and just dead solid. Now there's one more piece to this that makes it really tricky for players. A lot of times, players will be standing up. Their hips are moving toward the ball, their upper body's backing out of the way. And no matter how much I wanna have this lag in the downswing, I'm simply too far away from the golf ball to reach it. So I have to hit and throw with my arms to be able to make contact. 
Now, in a second, I'm gonna play a preview of a video that I call Knuckle Dragger, and I'm gonna describe exactly how you can stay down in your posture, get tons of lag in the downswing, and hit those really crisp, compressed shots. If you wanna see the full video, all you gotta do is go ahead and click the card that's gonna pop up somewhere here on your screen. Don't worry if you don't see that card. Go down to the description below, click the link there, and you'll get instant access to that. It's those two pieces. We gotta get rid of that hit impulse, and then we gotta put our body in a position to where it can even be possible to make contact with the golf ball the way the pros are doing. You put these two videos together, and you're gonna have an awesome swing. You're gonna have a ton of fun on the course. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the knuckle dragger video. This one is what I call knuckle dragger, and this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now, let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball, they start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball, so I'm getting farther away from the golf ball, and then all of a sudden I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice, when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind, and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early, to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now another piece to this, again, when I talked about having losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.